Audi TT Mark 1 3.2 V6, checking the timing chains. Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to the channel on a very damp, drizzly Sunday morning in December. Today's video is all about the timing chains on these great cars, so I'm about to hop in my car and drive an hour west to see Car Chris, who has kindly offered to check the timing chains for me using his OBD11 system. I'm also going to cover the how, when and why you check your timing chains to avoid an engine catastrophe. Right, that's enough from me, let's get in the car and get going. So while the car purrs its way around the M25, let's talk what is the timing chain. I mean, don't the TTs have a timing belt? Well, yes and no. The 180s and the 225 turbo engines do indeed have a timing belt. And we know that when they go snap, it means the end of your engine. The rubber belt is essentially keeping the engine running in perfect time. By doing so, it's keeping all of the engine bits, such as the pistons and the valves in sync, so they do not collide into each other, which is something you definitely want to avoid. So moving to the 3.2 V6, the engine instead has a timing chain. This chain is having to not only worry about keeping four inline cylinders in perfect harmony, but now has an extra two to consider. They are also no longer in line, but in two banks of three in a V shape, hence the name V6. Now that may sound very obvious to some, but I wanna make sure everyone understands what we are dealing with here. Now I had the timing belt on my 225 Cabriolet Quattro change back in the summer for 430 pounds, and it was around a two hour job from what I understand. The timing chain on the V6, well that is somewhat more involved, and you are looking at a four figure sum and a lot more labor to get this baby changed. The good points, well, the timing change on a V6 should be good for 100,000 to 125,000 miles, depending on how well it's been looked after and treated. This seems to be about the service life for most, and I've seen some say they can go well past this. However, I would suggest anything approaching this sort of age and mileage should be kept a close eye on. So why we have a chain and what it is has been discussed, but what about how we check it? Well, that is coming up in the remainder of the video with Chris, but I thought I would run through a few things first that can indicate a worn timing chain. They do have a habit of letting go without any prior warning, but here are some things to keep an eye on and an ear out for. Is there an unusual noise coming from the engine bay? Can you hear a rattly sound coming from the engine which could be chains? These could be unusual noises that you're hearing coming from the engine bay while sitting in the cabin. Another one could be an engine misfire. Sometimes an engine will start to misfire as it struggles with the timing. As a chain is starting to stretch with wear, things will not run as in sync as they once did. Maybe not yet at a terminal stage, but a misfire or engine management light could indicate a problem. A bit more involved, but have you noticed metal filings in the oil when you change it? This could be a sign of the engine starting to eat itself as it's ingesting part of the metal where parts of the engine are banging against each other due to a worn chain. So before these symptoms start to evidence themselves, you can actually check the condition of the chain and evidence of any chain stretch using an OBD11 or VCDS system. When I bought the car and in the first walk around video around the 3.2, which I will leave a link to above, you will remember that I asked for advice on the things that I should be checking on the 3.2 V6. I also asked you to leave me a comment and many of you did, so thanks a lot for that. I really do enjoy reading those comments and there was a unanimous response saying, check the timing chains first. Hence why I took it off to see Chris to get a verdict. So let's see how that went. After lining up my 3.2 and Chris's mapped and very nice red 225 next to each other for a side-by-side -side inspection, we popped the bonnet of the V6 to take a look under the hood. With the engine running, Chris remarked how good it sounded, so I took this as a tick in the right box, as chain rattle and noise is not a sign I wanted, so all good so far. We are using OBD11 software today, and Chris is matching OBD reader, so let's hear what Chris has to say about it. So the app you're using is called what? This is OBD11. Yeah. It's based like VCDS. Okay. But on a more of a, you know, using your phone with the Bluetooth dongle. Yeah. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. Because this is specifically designed for the VAG stuff. Okay. So the bulbs work. So that app is freely available. It's a, it's a charge to it, I imagine, is there? Yeah. So you buy the um, OBD11. And, and it comes with, you can get like a pro license, which you pay for yearly. Luckily, I got mine before they started charging for it yearly, okay. so I don't pay anything. Oh, that's cool. So it just gives you the full sort of um, 
diagnostic sort of things that you'll get with like VCDS and VADCOM and stuff like that. Obviously without having to carry a laptop around with you all the time. Yeah. So when you're checking that for chain stretch then, there's obviously a setting you're putting in there. Is there or something to checking that? So you've got a like tolerance, is it? Yeah, I think it's eight degrees, plus or minus eight degrees. Okay. That's what I've sort of found out what I think it needs to be around about that. And that can tell that from it can turn up just by... without the ignition being on, needs the ignition running for it. Yep, so once we're connected, yep. we'll turn the car on. Yep. Um, and just leave it at idle and then get the positions from the idle okay. from where it is and we're going to basic settings on the engine and it will tell us what the degrees are. Obviously it's close to zero yep. is basically what you want and ideally you want them both to be reading the same but the tolerances are plus and minus okay. eight degrees. So what we found out is there are actually four blocks that need to be read out on this software for the V6 Mark I which I believe are the same numbers on both OBD11 and VCDS. So the block numbers we need to be aware of and checking are 90, 91, 208 and 209. Now we're going to look at the, uh, the chains. Same people use 208, camshaft adjustment adaption. There we go. So camshaft adjustment intake, camshaft 3 degrees, 3 degrees, camshaft exhaust. So 3 degrees. Yeah. And 3 degrees. Oh yeah, yeah, this is it, see? Specification, minus eight yep. or max eight. Yeah. You've got minus three. Max 129. Oh. So. That said there about the position intake was, so that's 131. What was it on down there? Phase position intake camshaft, and then there was a minimum and a minus, uh, minimum and a max, wasn't there? Yeah. Minimum max is 129, and that's 131. That's 131 there, but then the intake camshaft offset. Yeah is between minus eight and plus eight. Okay. And you've so got three, which is pretty good. Okay. But it's just why that's one, three, one, which is slightly more than the positions tend to just go over to. And that's one, three, two. On that side. So that's exhaust side. That's intake side. Okay, so I need to find out what that one, three, one is compared to that max. Yeah, it's so slightly over. So to me, I would say the chain might not have that much stretch. It's probably the tensioners. But if, if you do the tensioners, do you, do you do, do the, the chains? Chain. Do you do them the same? I don't know if it's able to do, but they are very close to each other. So that's 132, now one's 131. Time and chain values in blocks 90, 90. 91. So if we go to 90 and 91 there as well, yeah. check those, block 90 should be set to zero. So I'm presuming there's other measurements somewhere on that chain where they can check the angles. Exactly that. So you're 91 on bank one. Yeah. We're up to like, adjustment needed 22 degrees. Oh, so you, you've got, I think on. you're good. I, I think you're good. On, I yeah. think your chain's absolutely fine. Happy <laughs> days. Yeah, so that's good news. That, I think that's, that's all fine. Because the set point is zero and we did have zero on them. We did, yeah. And then when we went to the other uh, measuring blocks, um, 90 and 91, set point is 22, and it was, it's 22. Due ratio is 15.3%, I do remember saying that. So I'm gonna go back, actually, it should be not, actual ratio should be not. See, so duty on. cycle. Spot Expire. on, mate, yeah. Yeah. Nice one. I think. So time it chains. I think I'm gonna be okay. Until I get off around the M25 on the way back <laughs> and the engine back. Yeah. But it looks like it's all within spec. The numbers it's saying it should be. Yeah, yeah, it seems absolutely to be. right. It looks like, you know, I can concur that. It's just that one phase thing there. Yeah. I'll have to look into what that can be. Now, I'd say if there was a problem with it and all the settings were out, hmm. then I'd say you've got a problem. There's obviously a bit of chain stretch, whatever's going on. But with one setting out and everything else being spot on, I think. I, I don't know, but I'd yeah. imagine it's unlikely to be that far out from what it should be. Exactly that. So yeah, I, I think you're right, mate. But well. I definitely think I'm going to invest in that bit of software. I think it seems it's, to be it's worth getting. Yeah. You just keep it in the glove box, even if you're out and about, and you get engine management like any sort of fault. Yeah, it's always worth just Absolutely. having it. There. I, I don't leave my house without. I keep a diagnostics in all of my cars. Yeah. Ideal. Sorry. Cracking, mate. Thanks for doing that for me. No worries. You've. Uh, Got me out of jail there. <laughs> well, I wasn't in jail by the look of it, was no, it? No, no, it's all right. So it's like that, we're all good. It does sound healthy. Should have a listen Do under the bonnet? See, it does sound quite healthy, doesn't it? Now, obviously, compared to yours, it's a lot dirtier. It does need a do bit of a <laughs> sort out. But um, it sounds really smooth, though. Yeah. It does sound really sweet. Really smooth. You 
you listening or smelling? A bit of both. <laughs> it does sound, it does sound pretty sweet, doesn't it? It you does. Li you're listening for it noises. Does, honestly, it, it sounds so smooth. Massive thanks to Chris for undertaking that chain read for me and for taking some time to explain how his Bluetooth dongle that plugs in under the dashboard and the software on his phone works. From the indicators that we got back from the readings, it looks and sounds like the chain is in great shape on the whole. However, I do have a nagging doubt about those rather high readings that came back from the max level for the phase position of the camshafts. Now I am still to establish what these numbers actually represent. But I have posted on the Audi TT forum along with screenshots of my chain readouts. The feedback I have had on there tends to agree with Chris's verdict that the chains are all good. As of recording this video, I do not have a definitive answer as to what those numbers represent. Also, the duty cycle on block 90 was reading rather high at 53% rather than the 15.3 we were expecting. So that again needs a bit of diagnosis. I will leave a list here as to what the settings are that we used to follow when we were checking blocks 90, 91, 208 and 209. That way you too have the tolerances and the readouts you need to check your chain. I do already have one of the Bluetooth OBD dongles that plugs in under the dash but I am going to invest in that software that Chris uses, OBD11, so I can keep an eye on the chains myself. One thing that was suggested to me on the Audi TT forum by Sunny Dean, so thank you Sunny Dean, regarding these high numbers was to check the cam sensors and give them a clean. Apparently they can become carbonized and give faulty readings. That would tie up with the potential high readings we're seeing. The good thing is this appears to be a very easy job to do. There's fairly good access to give this a clean and these parts are mounted on the gearbox side of the engine and they're only held in place with one Allen bolt. I've not done it yet, but I am going to do it in a future video, so keep your eyes on the channel for that. If you too have some thoughts on these chains and high numbers, then please do leave me a comment below, because I really would be interested in your feedback. I'm very keen to understand a bit more about these high numbers and what they actually mean. So I hope you've enjoyed tonight's video on the 3.2. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my Audi TT Mark 1 channel. There are plenty more jobs ahead to restore this great car. Once again, Thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.